Gracious Lord and everlasting Father, we give you thanks this beautiful and wonderful morning. A day you have made, a day we have come because you called, because you invited. We thank you, O oh dear God, as we are as many gathered in this hall today, in this sanctuary. Father, we come imperfect, but you are perfect. We come not because we have apprehended, but because you called. Speak to us this morning, Lord, that we may increase in our growth to your son, Jesus Christ, upon that cross, the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. It's an invitation to each one of us as we are gathered in this room to come and be of sound courage and to know that our God is calling us and he is here with us to allow that the word may speak to us and that our soul will be nourished. Yesterday, I was invited to speak briefly at the memorial service and to offer prayer last night, which I did. But I said to a little child whom I do not know to jump up, but the baby will not, or the little girl will not. And I said, I'll pick her up and throw her up and catch her, and she says, no. Walk ahead and walk away. One of my little ones came running and jumped on me and says, Uncle, Uncle. And I picked her and I threw her up and I dropped her to the ground. And I said, do you want me to throw you up again? Yes, Uncle. Because the little one knows me and could trust me. The other one didn't know me and will not trust me. and will not be sure how much if I threw her up in the head, she'll come back safely. And so she walks her little head and says, no. This morning, I'm sure as we come to the presence of our living God, we truly know him. And we've come with confidence to jump, not because we know how far we are going to jump and go, but because we know the one that is asking us to jump is there and ready for us to catch us, to pick us. For he calls us to come to him. And he says these words to Joshua that morning as he commissioned Joshua. As we are gathered here, many of us are probably saying, Wilson, take a little break. It's not for me. My time is gone past to be jumping. But you know, to each one of us in this room, from zero to, let me pick it up, guess, 90, or maybe 100, if we are close to that. I call 100 because I was privileged to celebrate a 100th birthday completely under my student ministry in PEI. And I was so proud when I stood beside the lady who was turning 100 years at last year. So she must be 101 now, because as far as I know, she's still alive. Praise the Lord. But to whatever age we are, the Lord is inviting each one of us that the journey has not stopped. The struggle is continuous. It's until we stop or our last fainty breath cease from us, the game is not over. The war is not over. It's a wrestling war, a continuous war. That's why Paul invited Philippi. He says, come and run the race with perseverance. It's the race we're going to run till we cross the winning line. And the winning line is only ever crossed when we truly cross it, when we come to that final place and cannot breathe anymore. For as long as we are still breathing, the race is still on and fresh for us. My grandmother used to sit and say, I failed my exams. And I look at my granny, I say, what exam did you write? Each time somebody passes on to eternity, she would say, I failed the exam because she wanted to go and she was not going. And to her not going and others going, she was failing and others were passing the exams. It's a joyful place to be, you know. And until we write the exam, we're actually not going to pass. You have to write to pass, won't you? Or don't you? So we have to write that exams to pass it. And if we don't write it, we cannot expect any results. So as long as we are strong, the Lord is not ushering us yet into an exams room to be writing. While we wait patiently for our time to write such exams, today I want to say to us, be of sound courage and keep doing what you've been called to do. Uphold the truth. 
If you cannot go door to door, you can whisper that truth to the ears of your grandchildren. The ears of your neighbor's kids will run past your front door and could kick the ball and come looking for it in your garden. You could just tell them a word of love and you keep doing that which we've been called to do. It says, be strong and be of good courage. Verses 1 to 5, the Lord called Joshua and commissioned Joshua. He says to Joshua, go over with these people, my people, bring them over. This morning, the Lord is saying to each one of us in this room, go and uphold the truth of the good news, the truth that you've heard, that God is still alive. He is still speaking. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Our God never changes. Though time does change, he doesn't change. He moves along with time. He is permanent and constant. And these words he says, the victory and possession of the land which follows is a direct result of the word of God and of man responding to his word. This should illustrate to us that there is absolutely no victory or chance for us to experience any blessings of our new life in Christ apart from the word of God. For we cannot come to a place to enjoy the glory and the beauty without the word. If it's spoken outside the word, then there is no newness that we may acquire. The newness is in it. The Lord spoke to them. The Lord said to Moses, this is what you're going to do. And then Moses did not accomplish it. And the Lord is saying to Joshua, after my servant Moses, I'm commissioning you to go. Numbers 14, the Bible reads, if the Lord delights in us, Joshua says, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their protection is removed from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. This was the message Joshua spoke and this is why God actually commissioned Joshua because Joshua was strong in his spirit and in his faith. He believed even to that which he did not know. He believed even to that which he has not seen, but he believed. Come with me as we look at our first slide. Yeah, thank you, Brother Paul. It is partly because we see things not as everyone else does. As we are in this room, no matter how the picture, you could paint the picture and keep it. People will see that picture differently. Sometimes because we choose just to be opposite and in adversary with others. Other times because truly we cannot see any different. And other times because truly we can see exactly what is before us. My ability, your ability to see, to rejoice, to receive is not our ability. It is a given ability. When you read Joshua chapter 1, you must read it in its emotional context. Moses is dead because he disobeyed God. That's why he, he, his life came short. He allowed the pressure of those following him to get to him. And he acted unbelieving, in an unbelieving manner. This certainly explained the spies' reaction in Numbers 13 as well, 26 to 33. You know, Moses came to that point and the people were all on top of him. And they've seen what God has done. And yet at this particular slight moment, they were under pressure. And Moses took his eyes off that which he has been commissioned to do <clears throat> and listened to the pressure the people were mounting. Today, we are living exactly in that time where society is mounting pressure on us. But yet, this is the word of God. The true word. The only word. The food befitting of our soul and our body. Look at the, the, the table on the board. Twelve were chosen from the tribe of Judah. Twelve were sent to look at the promised land. God has promised that he would take them into this land. Twelve went into that land. They testified to everything God has said. It was flowing with milk and honey. Joshua and Caleb were amongst the twelve. And they came back. 
10 saw barriers and said, we cannot go, Moses. It's just not happening. They are tall, they are big, and truth behold, the people of Anam were tall. They were big, they were giant, they were heavy men. One man constitutes five of the Israelites or ten of the Israelites, or you could pay them. And they panic, and they says, no, 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 we cannot go. But two saw blessings. They saw exactly what they were told. It would be a land flowing with milk and honey. They saw milk and honey. They saw the blessings of the land. They saw the abundance of the land. Ten saw giants. Two saw God at work. The Lord God have said, that is the land. You go in and acquire. Ten saw fortified city and their faith crumbled. Where is our faith this morning? I ask a question. Not one to be answered, but one to contemplate with. The God we serve is a living God. He's a wonderful God, the creator of heaven and earth, all powerful, all present. And you know, 10 said, the best is behind us. Let us go back. And Paul to the Philippi is saying, the one thing I want to forget is what is behind me. I just want to press on. Not because I have full knowledge of where I'm going, but because I trust the one that is calling me. The one that is calling me is giving me that assurance, that press on, for I am with you. And I'm sure to my parents sitting right in front of me here, you must have pressed on in adversity of many years to get here. And because you are here, we are here. Because we are here, the younger ones too will come behind us. And no matter how much the number drop in this very building, this very sanctuary, this sanctuary will not be closed, not in our time. We will do everything that this building stays open, trusting the one that is keeping it open, our living God. Before the last person leaves, he will be bringing 10 necks through that door. And this building will stay open until our Savior comes back. Let it not close in our time. Let us preserve it like those who went ahead of us, that those who come behind will have a place of prayer. 10 says, let's go back to Egypt. we rather in slavery. And 2 said... The best is yet to be. They knew they were insufficient for the task, but the Lord God was sufficient. This morning, as I was preparing my script, I said to myself, Wilson, what are you writing? For I wasn't too sure. But I knelt in front of my bed and I said, Lord, it is insufficient. But you are. We are here because the God we serve is a sufficient God. We are here because the God we serve is moving in the power of his might and his glory. It's never the majority, it's the minority. It was two out of twelve. It was not five and seven. It was two. Ten panic. And those ten did not enter the promised land. And the Lord says, you will not enter the promised land. But these two will push forward to the promised land. This morning I came to say to us that though the society might be changing its face, climate change has come. The time is moving very fast. Technology is eating everywhere and things are changing rapidly. I called you of St. Edward Presbyterian Church. Stay strong. Stay focused. For our God is with us. Each one of us. He is present. He is here. What a terrible outlook on life. It is no wonder that the Lord placed the mantle of leadership upon Joshua and Caleb. They were men of faith. They trusted God. They did not look at the city. They looked at what God has said. And in their minds and heart, they knew that the God they serve is the greater of heaven and earth, one and only, the one that brought them out of bondage in slavery and they stood strong with him let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in this time of need today we are running through a difficult time a time when the word is no longer the word a time when the word has become insufficient a time when philosophy and theology is taking its toll 
But yet this morning I say to each one of us, it's an open invitation. He's calling us and he says, be strong. Be of good courage. For I am with you. That's the only reason why we are called to be strong. Because he is with us. For we cannot do anything without him. There is nothing I can do without him. All I have got is in my maker. My power, my strength, my ability, my vocal is all him. He has given me life. Life that is not mine. Life that can be taken from me just like that. Every hour I breathe is Christ. And I cry that, Lord, the day I will not breathe anymore, may I also say it's again. Because the Bible says so. For yet in a little while, the coming one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. This is a commandment. And this is God speaking. His righteous one, his son Jesus Christ will come again. But for you and I, he says, if we shrink from this truth, if we shrink from this truth, if we move away from it, if we listen to the, the words of men and the words of philosophers and different concepts contrary to this word, he says, I'll move from you too. Let us stay strong. Let us be of sound courage. We are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but we are of those who have faith and persevere their souls. The second part of our reading, God will be with you, with us, Joshua says, verses 6 to 9. It says, be strong and courageous, for you shall cause these people to inherit the land that I have sworn to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and of sound courage. Joshua got nothing to do but to be strong. This morning I say to each one of us, we got nothing to do but to be strong. When Jesus commissioned his disciples, he says to them, go and preach the good news. He says, but the world will hate you. But it's not you. It's because they hated me first. The world was against him. He spoke the truth. And he was nailed on the cross for you and for me. But he wasn't just nailed on the cross because the world got at him to put him on that cross. He says, I will lay my life to the ground and I will pick it up again. It was his mission. It was his task. He came to pay a price. He came purposely for you and for me. He came to pay that ultimate price to give us life, to give us assurance, to give us hope. He came that we may understand eternity to his, of his father. Throughout his time on earth, it was from one chaos to another. Several attempts were made for him to be snatched off the crowd. But he says, my time has not yet come. Everything for him was with time. He understood the time you and I do not know and do not have. And he laid his life as he have spoken to his disciples. And he was put on that cross. And he paid that ultimate price for you and for me. And now he is inviting us to come to him. To be of sound courage. He spoke to Joshua. God spoke to Joshua. And today, this minute, his word is speaking to us too. He said, but I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for me, for you, that I have sent you. In everything the Lord commissions, there is an evidence of his commissioning. He calls you. He evident himself throughout the call. And you can see it. And this morning, our gracious God is speaking to us. Go out from here and be my ambassadors. Don't limit yourself with a cup of tea. Don't limit yourself with a cup of coffee and say, I am of age. I no longer can do it, Wilson. No, you can. 
As long as you could still go out of that house and walk to grocery, as long as you could say to somebody down the street, good morning to you and God loves you, you're doing his mission. Go and show the love of Christ to someone. Go that someone can see you and see your Savior through you. Be of good courage. Be strong. Be sound. Stand firm. Those who went before us, Paul, Peter, Matthew, James, and all the others, they faced adversity. They walked through adversity. They did not go, and it wasn't hunky-dory for them. It's not just a place to come and say, I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. But it's a place to come and really stand and just be silenced and hear that those words sing through you. I need thee every hour. Because we truly need him every hour, every day, every second. Without him, we can do nothing. Without him, there is not even a strength in us to stand up and preach the good news now that every avenue is blocked. The word of God is no longer tolerated in schools, in our schools today to our children. The word of God is no longer tolerated in common communal places. The word of God is restricted. But are we restricted too? He's calling us this morning. Be strong. Be of good courage to know that I am with you. They came after me, they will come after you. They hated me, they will hate you. And the Lord said to Paul, one night in a vision, do not be afraid, but go on speaking. Do not be silenced, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you. For I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months teaching the word of God amongst the people of God. This morning, I called you that I am not sending you, my parents, elderly here in front of me, door to door. But I'm asking you, put your knees on the ground and pray for the kingdom's work on earth. Pray without season. Pray like you never prayed before. Pray and ask God to come amongst his people, his workers, and to speak the truth that they may stand up for the truth. The Lord says, go and preach the good news that Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. There is no other route to which we can come except through the Son. I am speaking to you because you've answered the invitation of the Lord and you are here this morning. I'm speaking to you because I have answered the invitation and I have come this morning that we could share into the blessings he has apportioned us. I come to say to you, be strong. Rejoice, for the Lord is here with us. I know when we look left and we look right, the place looks scanty. And we're probably asking a question. Father, move again in the power of your glory. He is moving. He is moving in the power of his glory. He is blessing our people. Our streets are blessed. Our nation is blessed. For we know countries that are ripping each other apart in civil wars and other things. And we can go to bed and even leave our front door open and still sleep in peace. Then I ask the question, what is it? What is it? Let us stand strong and be of sound courage and to know that our gracious God is with us. For God gave us a spirit not of fear or of timidity, but of power and love and self-control. I can. You can. We as a church family can stand up for the truth and speak the truth as it is written in the word of God. I say again, I can, you can, we can. Not as the ex-president of the United States of America, Barack Obama, says we can. No. But I'm saying here, we can. We can through him who strengthened us, Jesus Christ. We can do all things. Jesus did not say to his disciples, it would be like hunky-dory. Jesus says to his disciples, pick your back. 
take your cross and follow me. It's a cross. He's asking that we take that cross and follow him. To speak the good news is the cross we are bearing. Many have drifted away from it. Many are teaching us what they believe and think we want to hear. This morning, I may be disappointing you because I don't have what you might have come to hear. But I've got what I'm wrestling with, which I believe we have come together to wrestle with as a family. The truth of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings. For it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by food which have not benefited those who devoted to them, Hebrews 13, 8. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore, he has not changed. His words are the same. It has not changed. Many Bibles have been written today trying to tweak and change. But yet the word of God is the same. And I invite us to stand to those very words to which we were born and were taught true by our own parents and today we are parents too and to transfer this good news to our children in its original context not outside the holy bible this is our life this is all we've got i love to say it otherwise but i do not have the authority with me to speak any different from what i have read i write these things to you believers in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Yet again, this is John writing in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. He says, I write these things to you, believers. It's not for everyone. If it was for everyone, I would be in a shopping mall, outside the shopping mall, and I will be shouting this morning. All of you, as you go in and out of the shop, you are blessed. You got eternal life. Now, he's saying to us this morning, as we are gathered here, many also gathered in other sanctuaries in different nations. He said to all those who are gathered in the name of the sons of in the name of the Son of God, be it in basements, in houses where war and adversity will not allow them meet. He said, as long as we are meeting, as long as our hearts and minds are meeting and uniting in the name of the Son of God, he says, You, I am with you, and you have got eternal life. Rejoice. For it is a guarantee. A guarantee not because we are intelligent and smart. A guarantee because we believe. He is not yet to count our intelligence. He is yet to count our faith. And how much we believe in him. God's everlasting love. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who or what can separate us from the love of God? Let me say to you this morning, you're blessed. Your children are blessed. Your grandchildren are blessed. Your great-grandchildren yet to be born are blessed. Not because I say so, but because the word of God says so. You stay strong and be of sound courage. Though they might seem drifting away with the pressure of society and time, they're covered because you're covering them while interceding. Let us stay interceding for our community so that our community, many in it, will be blessed because we are interceding for them. Do not lack confidence to share your faith, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for my salvation, for the salvation to everyone who believes. The Bible says it is the power of God to our salvation and to the salvation for everyone who believes. I am not ashamed of the Holy Bible. I am not ashamed of Genesis chapter 1. I am not ashamed of Revelation chapter 22. I am not ashamed of every word, any word in the scripture. I will preach from start to finish. I will speak God's word in my immaturity. I will speak it loud enough. I will speak it in every arena that I am placed to speak. For I know one thing. 
one thing only, that the enemies are at work, but our gracious God is powerful. He is here. My dear brothers and sisters, let us do what is right before our maker and redeemer, calling unto him for strength and courage to do what he has assigned us to do. He has assigned us to feed one another with the word. When we say our final amen, we're going to go down in the basement. I've been down there. I've seen the cutleries already put. So I started salivating and I thought, Lord, I'm going to really be speedy with things so that I can go down there and fill my stomach. But yet the bigger invitation is for us to eat this first. This is the meal that we need. This is the meal that sustains our soul. This is the meal that protects us. This is the meal that energizes us. And as we come closer to finish, let me read these words again. My dear brothers and sisters, let us do what is right before our maker. What is right before our maker is standing up and speaking the good news as it is written according to his word. This is an invitation for you and for me. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, as they were singing and praying and rejoicing, the Lord God spotted something. They did not tell him. He saw it. God saw it from heaven. He spotted in their mind that they were in one accord. They were in agreement. And the Bible says he added unto their numbers 3,000. One soul, one soul I will not bring into this building. One soul I will not bring. And my prayer is, gracious God, may I not cause one soul to leave this building, not to return. But God will add to our numbers. But our hearts need to align and be in one accord. As we sang, as we are gathered, as we are gathered to come to that place and to be open, that the Spirit will manifest. May the glory of our Maker manifest upon us this morning, that our Redeemer, our Lord and Savior, will pay that ultimate price who see the joy in our heart and will respond to it. In his mighty and powerful name, amen. I presume we're going to a prayer of intercession and it's going to be a responsive prayer of intercession. If you hear me say, God of the earth and all its people, you can respond, let your light shine. Let your light shine. And if you're in French, laissez ta lumière brillant. Okay. Let us pray. God of the earth and all its people, let your light shine. on this National Indigenous Sunday, we pray for the indigenous community across this land and all around the world. We thank you for indigenous leaders who lead and advocate for the needs of their people. Bring healing to those who confront painful experiences and build bridges of understanding amongst us all. May your justice prevail so that indigenous community have the resources needed to strive and to receive respect for the decision they make. We pray for the National Indigenous Ministry, Ministry Council, and the ministries with indigenous people that the council attends. Bless the leaders and participants in each ministry with the resources they need to serve their community effectively. Teach the wider church what is being learned through those communities and depend the bonds of faithful friendship we can share with each other. God of the earth and all its people. Let shine. God of healing and hope, thank you for your faithfulness to us in all situations 
We pray for all those who are ill or in pain, for the anxious and discouraged, for those who face death or the loss of someone dearly beloved, and for those struggling to make ends meet in these uncertain times. We pray for Presbyterian World Service and development and its partners as they work to bring healing and hope to places of strife and deprivation. May the mission we share in Jesus' name shine the light of your love into desperate lives. God of the earth and all its people. God of the faithful future, bless this community of faith and guide us as we plan for the future in changing times. Bless students and teachers as the school year ends and restore them to learning with summer enjoyment. Grant us all time to rest and enjoy this summer and replenish our hope and energy to serve in your world. I lift up all the elders and working committees of this congregation. Father, I pray your blessings. I pray your abundance. I pray wisdom. I lift up our minister, Pastor Enoch Lee, while he's away, Father, that you bless him and his household and you preserve them until they come back. And Father, I bless each one of us as we are seated on this pew, as our hearts ponder and search for strength and courage, that you will locate us and enact in us. And Father, O oh dear God, you will give us a place to respond as a sign. Move before us, O oh God, as you moved always before your people that in your Son, Jesus Christ, we will find peace and health. And yet again, we turn to you in the prayer he taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who act in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.